Hello, my name is Roger Werney. I'm with Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory, and I'm going to talk to you today about ultra wideband and electronic measuring, communication, and imaging capability, and we're looking for the killer app. So what is ultra wideband and why is it useful? First of all, it's a very low power radar pulse of a few nanoseconds in duration, and these pulses can be sent out at megahertz frequencies, which means millions of pulses per second. When the pulse hits an object, part of it is reflected and part of it is penetrated. Because it is reflected and the time of flight of the reflected pulse can be measured very accurately, you can actually measure distance and velocity of a moving object very accurately. Because part of the pulse actually transmits through the image, through the object such as a wall, you can detect imaging uh, through barriers such as behind walls. It also has a very robust communication capability and can be used for RFID tagging, and I've got examples of all of these to follow. We first used ultra-wideband uh, for search and rescue back in the uh, late 90s and into 2000, and we used it in the uh, World Trade Center in 2001 to look for signs of respiration and heartbeat under the rubble pile in New York uh, at the World Trade Center location about a week after the actual collapse of the buildings. Our team, which is uh, shown below in the figure, actually went to New York and used the instruments to search the robopile looking for cavities and for signs of life. And unfortunately, they did not find anybody uh, in the robopile. It was later used in the uh, Katrina uh, flood in Louisiana, in which case the uh, signs of life were looked for, the heartbeat and respiration and motion were looked for inside of the attics of homes that were flooded, and this was done from a helicopter which would fly over the home. We'd take an image, look for, look for signs of motion or, and or life signs, and uh, go from there. This is an example of uh, an electronic fence that was developed for the Department of Defense. An ultra-wideband unit can be uh, used to create a bubble, a bubble, let's say, of uh, 50 feet in diameter. It's like a hemispherical bubble, and uh, if any object penetrates the periphery of that bubble at the 50-foot radius, it will actually send a signal and notice it's been penetrated. These bubbles can be placed tangent to one another along a fence line or a, along a line as shown in the figure, and um, each, one of the G, each one of the units is GPS located. So if a particular bubble is, um, is penetrated, by an object, you can detect the fact that it has been penetrated, and you can also detect where along the line it was penetrated. Also, the size of the object can be differentiated because this is a bit of a smart radar system, and so you can, de you can differentiate between a squirrel that might penetrate the bubble versus a human being. Uh, the system itself is uh, packaged in a very robust way, uh, as shown in the lower right-hand corner, and in fact, the unit in the lower hand right hand corner was dropped off of the top of a five story building onto a concrete uh, sidewalk and continued to function normally. This is an example of video communication, which is really quite interesting. Uh, this experiment was done back in 2006 on one of the ships in the mothball fleet in Susun Bay, uh, east of San Francisco. And in this particular situation, a video camera was put on the upper deck and various receiving uh, videos, uh, video image, imagery capability were put on the lower decks and the lower three decks. And then all of the uh, hatches uh, between the decks were closed and then the video was turned on and you can see in the lower right hand corner the images that were received in spite of the fact that all of the deck hatches were closed. And so it's really, it's really quite amazing that the uh, imagery and the signal was able to get through the little nooks and crannies and cracks in the doors and still give you a viable image. In the lower deck there's a little bit of noise uh, in those three images but uh, that could be cleaned up with electronic uh, uh, capabilities. Um, our most sophisticated imaging capability was done for the Department of Transportation in a project called Hermes. And uh, as you can see in the upper right hand corner there's a white van and a white trailer. That trailer contains an ultra-wideband imaging capability that was designed to image rebars in bridge decks of box girder bridges as it drove over the uh, bridge deck at a speed of 50 miles an hour. And as you can see in those red images, you get a really uh, good image of the rebars themselves uh, at that speed. And 
in the lower right section of that uh, upper quadrant, you can see some splotches, and that's actually the delaminations in the concrete that were picked up around the bars themselves. And so it's a capability that worked quite well. In the lower left corner, you can see uh, an imaging capability that was developed for the police department, in which case the officer is holding an array of detectors. And uh, one of the things the uh, police want to know, the SWAT teams want to know, is is there somebody inside that closed room? And so you can actually take this capability, put it up against the sheetrock wall, and it will tell you whether or not there are any inhabitants in the room next door. And so again, that's, uh, and all of these things can have a capability of 15 to 25 feet. And so it's quite a useful capability for the law enforcement officials. This is an example of an ultra wideband RFID tag. Now in conventional RFID, there's two kinds of tags. There's a passive tag, uh, which has no power on board, and an active tag, which has power on board. Uh, a battery in particular. In the case of a passive tag where there's no power on board, the useful interrogation range of the tag is about one meter. When you put a battery on board, the useful interrogation distance is about 10 to 20 meters. In fact, the, um, the, key, the keys on most automobile cars today have uh, active uh, RFID tags on board. Um, the interesting thing about our tag is, is that it actually has, we call it an active passive tag because it's got a little capacitor on board and the initial part of the interrogation signal actually charges the capacitor and and takes it from being an act a passive tag into being an active tag because the capacitor acts like a battery this active tag has a useful distance of 10 to 20 meters as though it had a, a regular battery on board and the interesting thing about that is is that you don't have to ever replace the capacitor if you have a conventional battery on a tag, they've got to replaced, be replaced periodically, which is a, a cost and an expense that's uh, unwarranted. Uh, in this case, the uh, capacitor never, worries out, never wears out, and so uh, the tag is um, an active tag uh, with essentially an infinite lifetime. Uh, the other interesting thing about the tag is, is that it has uh, its read-write in the sense that uh, you can store information and program it uh, on the fly, and so if a, uh, if a unit or particular high value item is being moved from place to place, you can actually um, you know, record its location and then track its history as a result of having stored information on the tag periodically on an as required basis. The tag only requires nanowatts of power and therefore is a, which is extremely low. And at present, it's about the size of two postage stamps because of the antenna requirement. We believe the costs uh, of this tag when done in bulk will be less than a dollar, which for tags is still a bit expensive, and that's why we like to think it's uh, for a high value inventory. Uh, in fact, this, um, this uh, tag was originally designed to look for high, in, high value inventory items in a large room where you might have misplaced the items or you might not know where they are, and so you could then using triangulation uh, asks the question, are you here? And if so, where are you? That's it for uh, Ultra Wideband today. And if you have any questions, give me a call. I'm Roger Werney at werney1 at lnl.gov and at 925-423-7302. Thank you.